Hello friends. In our last two tutorials, we learned in detail about inheritance and interfaces. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on polymorphism aspect in Java. Let's recall first of all what real world scenarios we had discussed in our last tutorials. We knew that we were talking about offsprings deriving the characteristics and behaviors from their parents. It is almost similar to how a derived class gets the behavior and properties from the base class. Then we learned that even though the child class have similar properties and behaviors, they are still unique in their own ways. We also we saw that a programmer can be a singer as the, at the same time someone else who is not an employee which was carpenter can also be a singer. So we can have interface singer which can be implemented by any number of classes which may or may not be same. So we have smelled interfaces just like how different people around us have unique nature. And now we are going to dive into polymorphism. One, one easy way to understand what polymorphism is to understand that we can ask different people to do the same thing but they will do the same thing in different ways. Like I, I can ask two people to sing. Now these two people can be programmer 1 and programmer 2. They both are employees. But still I can say that programmer 1 might sing a melodious song. Programmer 2 might cook up a rap. Right? Now let's understand the example which we discussed in our last tutorial. We had a programmer class. We had a manager class and both this programmer and manager derived from a base class employee and then the story told that a programmer can be trained a manager can be trained but a manager can also do one more thing which is conduct interviews so we discussed that what we will do is we will create a base class employee we will have two classes programmer and manager which will derive from the base class employee. This means the programmer will extend employee class and manager will also extend employee class. And then we will create two interfaces. One is trainable which defines a method train. Another interface is interviewer which will define a method interview. Your programmer and manager both can be trained so they both will implement the trainable interface. However, a manager is the only person who can take interviews so he will implement the interviewer interface. Let's see the code for this so that you have a better understanding of this concept. You have an abstract class employee which is the base class which defines the common properties name address phone number and then it defines an abstract method called work. Now we have two child classes, derived classes, which extend this employee class. And because it extends the employee class, which is abstract, this programmer class has to define or implement the abstract method here. Right? You will see that employee class is also implementing an interface called iTrainable. Let's go to iTrainable interface iTrainable interface is simply a contract which says that whoever is implementing me should define a method called train. And similarly we also have another interface iInterviewer which says that anyone who implements iInterviewer should know how to conduct an interview and for this he or she has to define a method iInterview uh, which returns void. So our manager class extends the employee class and it implements the trainable and I interviewer implement. Uh, uh, it implements these two interfaces. So you will see that the work method is implemented because this method was defined in the base class. The interview method is required because this manager class implements the I interviewer interface and the train method is required in manager class because 
a manager implements i trainable interface if i remove this you will see that eclipse will tell you that you are missing something you have to add some unimplemented methods right so this is how our hierarchy is existing right let's understand it again programmer and manager extend the base class employee programmer and manager implement the trainable interface and the manager class implements the interviewer interface now we will get into the gist of polymorphism polymorphism means one name multiple forms so let's understand this in very detail because this knowledge is going to help you in writing good code so let's say i am having a programmer i am having a programmer object so let's create a programmer object the the very first way to create a programmer object is to create a programmer reference variable and i can say that a programmer reference variable can point to a programmer object so here i am creating a programmer peter who knows c sharp and java and this is first way referencing using same class right and then when i say p1 dot work you will observe that the output is that the programmer peter is working another way is you can use referencing using base class which means that i can have a base class reference variable employ e1 and i can do this now employ e1 is pointing to an object of type programmer now comes the most important part of this tutorial if i want to refer something you will observe that i can have even dot work is available to me but i don't have any other method because even doesn't know anything about training or anything about taking interviews now let's say here and i know that programmer p1 implements an interface trainable so you so train method is also available and so this can be understood by a diagram something like here where you can assume that a base class is embedded in a derived class and when you use a base class reference it has visibility only to the methods in the base class therefore employ even can work but employ e1 cannot train but p1 can train because p1 is the direct instance of derived class and it has visibility on train method but if i write e1 dot train uh, this is invalid will not compile right so this is the second way to uh, actually refer a base or uh, derived class using a base class variable so programmer p1 says that i am a programmer i can code he can also get trained and employee can only work right now this is second way third way is referencing using interfaces what what does this mean i can create a, a instance of type i trainable let's say t1 and i can point it to p1 object again 
this is again valid because a programmer class implements trainable interface and when I write t1 dot I will see only one method train but t1 dot work might not be available because t1 is an instance of type i trainable and this is also invalid and will not compile so now you can see that a reference type defines what is visible to it when you have an instance of when you have an instance of a programmer but references of type base class it can only see the base class methods when an instance is of type interface it can only see the methods which are defined in an interface although the object is same in all those cases right so here you will say that I can say programmer p is new programmer this is method 1 you can use a super class type saying employee p is equal to new programmer and third is using trainable right using an interface type so polymorphism is something which provides us capability to do different things based on the object that it is acting upon right now let's understand this that polymorphism means using the same name and having multiple forms now there are two ways of implementing polymorphism one is method overloading another is method overriding let's discuss method overloading first method overloading means you are going to define two methods or two or more methods in a class which have same name but they differ in number or type of the parameters okay you would have seen this we, we have done a lot in case of constructors where you overload the constructors now let's see this how what I'm meaning here let's say I have a class called uh, programmer and a programmer can actually uh, hack he can hack in one he can hack in days or he can hack in weeks so I can define a method here saying that a pro public void hack and if you give him some days he will hack out something awesome hacking for days but there can be another way to hack where the hacking is only for small duration and you don't provide number of days I can say hacking for few hours so this programmer has two methods hack and hack both have same name but depending upon the parameters number of parameters we have different implementations so when I say that let me comment out everything so that you are focusing only on a programmer a programmer object right now so I can say that p1.hack and I can say p1.hack again but if I provide a number automatically a different method will be called so I'm using the same name but different implementations are getting invoked depending upon the number of parameters we are passing with them right so in first case we see hacking for few hours and in second case we see hacking for days this is compile time polymorphism where you use the same name of the method but depending upon number of parameters of parameters and number of arguments different implementations are called second thing is method overriding we have seen this in our previous tutorial but let's see it again uh, let's say our employee class is not an abstract class and this employee class actually uh, defines the default implementation of work uh, we can say that employee always works now this is the default implementation and let's say I remove the implementation from the programmer class right now if I 
have a programmer object and if I just say programmer dot work then you will see that base class method is getting invoked second thing is if I provide the specific implementation then the same code will invoke the specific implementation this is one kind of polymorphism another kind of polymorphism is you can have two objects let's say first one is a programmer and second one is a manager manager e1 or let's say m1 and the manager name is Mike they both live poles apart and manager doesn't know programming he knows to manage people so I have now two objects p1 and m1 and I create a single employee e1 reference and I can say it right now e1 is let's say p1 right now and I can say e1 dot work right so in this scenario uh, in this scenario we are going to have a simple e1 object and I'm trying to point it to a programmer p1 and let's see what does it execute he says that I'm a programmer I can code because employee points to a programmer object at this point of time at the same time if I change this to m1 same employee reference can point to a manager now and it can again the same method will implement some will have different implementation triggered and a manager class will get triggered here right so this way we observe that same call can lead to different output depending upon the instance which is pointed by the base class reference this is another example of runtime polymorphism so runtime polymorphism is either by method overriding or by using a base class reference pointing to different kinds of child class references depending upon the current reference it is pointing to the same method call will point will trigger the appropriate methods so in this tutorial we learned about polymorphism we also learned about examples of polymorphism and we saw this in action stay tuned with our future tutorials goodbye